Hi guys, Ryo here with another tooth for hard ups in Blender. Today I want to show you everything you need to know about Mirror. If you click on an object and press Alt X, you will see a gizmo popping up, and that's hard ups gizmo for the mirror. Now it has different colors, and each color represents an axis so yellow for Y, X for red, and blue for Z. If I then press on one of these points, so for example here, then if I clicked on one of these points, let's say this one, you will see the object will get mirrored. In addition, you will have a mirror modifier being added to the modifier stack with the correct axis being highlighted. So now let's do this again, press Alt X, and you can see that at the top we have a new mirror bar, at the bottom as well. So Hardops received an update recently and the mirror has changed and there are new functions, new options, so let's talk about it. So the top menu, you can see different types of mirrors. Then you have orientations, pivot points, additional options, and at the bottom, this bar is all about shortcuts. So X will reset the mirror to, by, to the default, so to these settings, which is modifier local active origin. Then W will toggle orientation, S will toggle pivot points, right? Then D will bring up the new menu, and Shift will actually um, activate multi mirror. Then the last key here is A, and it will simply switch between different modes of uh, mirror modifier display. So the menu here, you see that now I can actually click on this drop down menu and see that I have a mirror modifier going on on this object. And if I go to to my menu here, to the stack modifier, so the control tilde option in hard ops, you can see a modifier being added and the same in Blender modifier stack. Let's talk about more complex mirroring options. So let's select the object, press Alt X, and let's see what we can do. Now the traditional, um, the default and traditional mirroring is the one I showed you before. So I simply click on um, any axis and it will add a mirror, right? Then again, if I switch it to a new modifier, right? It will create new modifier every time I actually mirror something. So let's say that um, um, we switch this back to modifier. And then if I hold shift, remember shift is for multi mirror and I click on Y axis, I'm still holding shift, and then X axis, and then uh, sorry, Z axis, and then X axis, right? So I mirror this object on every single axis. I should have three mirror modifiers, but I only have one. However, this one modifier you can see that it displays everything, so it's been mirrored on X, Y, and Z. So if you wanted to have modifier for every single mirror that you perform, you need to click on this option. So now, if I hold shift and click on Y, X, and Z, if I open my modifier stack, you can see that now I have three mirrors for Y, X, and Z. Now let's talk about modifier apply. All these previous mirrors, so this one and this one, were live, which means they were not applied. If you select modifier apply, you tell in hard ops to mirror an object across whichever axis you choose, and then apply this modifier. So this is destructive mirroring. So if you do not want to have the mirror in the stack, then this is the option you would choose, right? Then you have bisect. Bisect is an interesting mirroring. So it will slice the object in half and it will create a face and it's also destructive. And this is why it creates a face. Because you see, if I chose the next option, which is bisect modifier, it will bisect an object and actually mirror it across. So what it does technically, it's adding a mirror modifier. However, if you go into the object mode, uh, into the edit mode, you will see that um, only half of the um, verts and, and edges um, are actually visible because the other ones are an active mirror. So if I perform on a change in here, it will be reflected on the other side of the mesh. Now, if I apply this mirror, right, 
and I go to X-ray mode, you can see that, and by the way, this is a Pi menu from Machine Tools add-on, which I recommend in every single video of my almost, because it's so, so just convenient, it's amazing. So I can access my auto merge, um, you know, my uh, X-ray mode, everything through this add-on. Extremely useful. So you can see that um, the face in the middle has disappeared. So the face from the bisect, remember when the object was sliced and the, um, the face was created. So what it does, it simply slices the object, it mirrors it across and it's a modifier. But after applying, you will still has to have this edge in the middle. So be mindful of this. For example, if you're doing this, uh, performing this mirror on, let's say, a sub D surface, you will have additional edge going through the middle. So it could mess up your um, your geometry or your bevels, for example, right? Then the last option is symmetry. And symmetry is kind of um, similar to bisect modifier and apply. So it's kind of, um, it's a bit of a hybrid between bisect and bisect modifier because what it does, it's actually bisecting the object and applying the modifier. So it's, um, if you go to, uh, if you go to the edit mode, you can see that the result is actually identical to what we had after um, adding this bisect modifier and applying the modifier. So simply it bisects the mesh and applies the modifier. This is very useful for very quick copying um, geometry for one side to the other, for example, when you're doing retopology or when you're fixing something on one side of the mesh and you have a symmetrical mesh and you simply want to copy it very quickly to the other side. So if I, for example, edit um, a subdivide here and I had another vert, I can very quickly symmetrize this and I'm going to have vert on the other side, you see. But that's destructive, so it's actually applying all the changes to the mesh and there is no modifier being added. Let's talk about the second menu now. Orientation is set to local and that's by default. What does it mean? Well, the gizmo will follow the rotation and location of this object, so the active object, which means um, if I'm going to mirror this object on its own axis and I press Alt X, it will mirror across Y axis. However, if I rotated this object by 45 degrees and then press Alt X, you see that the gizmo is following the local orientation. Now, if I switch to here to global, you see the gizmo will shift back to global orientation, which is X, Y, and Z, right? So it follows the, the world axis. So local simply will follow orientation of the object you are mirroring across. And now active origin, it means the origin point of an active object. So if I select this object and this object and then press Alt X, even though I'm in local mode, it will not actually align with the first one, but with the active object, which is this one, because you see it's highlighted. And the origin point in the middle here is also highlighted, which means it will flip across the active origin. So the origin of the active object, right? Across like this. However, if I rotated this object, right? And then I select this one and this one and then press Alt X. Now the axis will follow active origin and orientation and rotation of this object. Now sometimes you will have a rotated object and it might not work this way. And you might think, well, something is not right. Well, it depends because you see, for example, if I go to Alt A and apply my rotation right, to this object, it means it will reset its rotation to zero. So it will reset the rotation to the global axis. So now if I stay in local mode, right, local axis, even though this object is technically visually rotated, mathematically it isn't because basically it's been reset to a world, um, to a basic rotation of zero degrees on Z axis. So let's talk about global then. Well, global again is just um, following a global axis. So it doesn't matter what's the rotation of your object, it will always follow the global X, uh, X, Y, and Z. Now let's talk about view rotation. View rotation is quite interesting because the gizmo will follow actually your camera. 
So wherever you place your camera, your gizmo will actually adjust. Now I want to mention something interesting too, and that's a new feature of Hardups. Let me make this object a bit smaller so you can see. There was an empty created inside of this object. So mirroring Hardups now creates an empty inside of the object that you're mirroring across. So if I move the empty around, I can actually readjust my mirror. So let's say I could press RZ, hold control, and snap it into increments and sort of adjust it accordingly to wherever I wish to place it, right? Extremely powerful because you don't have to do it manually in Blender. Now by default, this empty is not parented to the object it was, um, the mirror was actually performed across. If you wanted to, you could parent this empty to, to an active object, so you, it will actually move with the active object. So if you needed to parent the empty to the object, you can do this in here. Now the last here in the menu is uh, cursor orientation, but to be quite frank with you, um, it doesn't really work for me. I cannot figure it out how it works, how it's been calculated. So maybe this is some kind of an experimental um, function in Hardups at the moment, but um, due to its unpredictable nature, I don't see a practical use for it in my workflow. But if you can figure it out, let me know. I'll be more than uh, happy to hear your thoughts, guys, because this is quite a, quite a puzzle. Uh, Jerry, if you're watching this, maybe you can cast some light on it, because I, I really don't understand how it's supposed to work. Now let's talk about um, active origin and individual origins. Let me select this function here because I'll need it to illustrate this point better. With active origin, so it's a singular, not origins, but origin, right? That's important. You are flipping across the origin of an active object, which means the last object selected. So in this case, in this one, and in this case, is this one, right? However, if I, let's say, uh, flip my cursor to uh, this corner, and then flip my um, median point to the origin point to um, to the cursor, right? And then I select both and I switch to active origins. Then it will use both origins of both objects to flip. So it depends where you put these origins, um, you will, you know, inf influence the mirror behavior. So that's the difference between active origin and individual origins. The second option here is median point, and that one is quite cool. So it will mirror, um, it will place the mirroring gizmo in between uh, these two origins. So if I have two objects selected or more, right, gizmo is going to get created in the middle of those three origin points here. So that's how it works. Now cursor as a pivot point is interesting because you could, for example, snap it to a face and then you could use um, you could use this face as a flipping point and create interesting shapes like this with a mirror. Could be very powerful. Well, let's talk about the last menu now. So we discussed parent empty to active object, which basically parents object to an empty that's been created by a mirror. And this one here, it will allow you to mirror not only this object, but also the object you're mirroring across. So if I um, switch this to active origin, so to the middle, and mirror across, you can see now that both objects got mirrored across Y axis and both objects will get mirror modifier as long as you have this option here selected, right? So that's how it works. Then this one is really weird and I know who whose idea this was. It was for sure Master Z on 1001 because uh, he likes odd stuff. <laughs> so this one is really freaky. What it does, it reverts um, the gizmo handles. So if I wanted to mirror this object across this object to this side, and I had this option turned on, this one, right? I have to 
click on this gizmo uh, handle because it reverses the order and position of gizmo handles. I'm not sure who would want to have this kind of option. Maybe it's oriented for left-handed people. Um, that's the only, you know, uh, thing I could come up with. But it's there if you want it. So if you want to, you know, if you want to go psychedelic mirroring, that's that's your friend there. <laughs> okay, and there is one more thing I want to show you guys. It's pretty cool. So this option was in mirror, uh, Hardup's mirror for a long time, but since the mirror was updated, it's been introduced to a new place. So let's place a decal here with decal machine. Hold Control and G and move this to a place. I'm gonna swap to look dev. Press Alt M to add the blank material, and let's fix this hotlining of the decal by going to. Uh, decal machine and changing color interpolation to closest. Now if I select the decal and the object, let's actually project it so it's properly set on the face. There we go. Um, and then I flip it across. You see that the text is actually mirrored. I mean, it's a mirror reflection of this text, right? Now in order, order to fix this, um, you could actually select this option here and if I flip now across x-axis you see that the text has been displayed correctly. The problem with this um, this options in here at the moment I hope it will change and I think it's a either bug or an oversight is that if you press X to reset the mirror right it will reset all these options here so for example if I switch to global and this active origin to cursor, if I press X, you see this will reset, but these options will not. So if you have something, f you know, toggled on in here, and even if you reset the mirror, this will stay on, so be mindful of it. Now the way I prefer to do it, instead of actually using this new function in here, is to go to the mirror modifier in hard ops, so control tilde to open this menu, open the modifier stack in here and you can just simply flip you in here and the decal is going to get mirrored so you see if i adjust this function or this one it will flip decals um, on uh, the uvs of the decals the textures that's everything you need to know about mirror in hard ups thanks for watching drop us a like and subscribe if you did it really helps the channel from now on, I'm going to be creating a lot of different videos on hard surface modeling, mainly sci-fi because that's my focus. So I'm going to be covering add-ons, tutorials on add-ons, and also workflow and troubleshooting and all kinds of good stuff. In addition, I'm really into rendering, lighting, and, and so on. And uh, I'm going to for sure be creating some uh, videos quite soon actually on how to optimize your rendering, how to make it faster, and how to create beautiful renders in Blender and then post-process them in Photoshop. Well, hope you enjoyed the vid guys and once again thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.